Hey everyone, I'm Mark and welcome to episode one of unboxing the 1976 Christopher Rhodes time capsule. So today we're going to take a look at the first few items and uh, the first one we're going to look at is the newspaper article. Now this shouldn't involve too too much work. Um, uh, there's not a whole lot that we can do with it. It's, it's a fragile piece of old newsprint. Um, what I'd like to do ideally is get it separated from this paper and then we can mount it on a piece of acid free paper and uh, you know vacuum seal it and um, protect it a little bit. Uh, but first, we need to get it off of this uh, backing, which really isn't uh, worth anything. It's kind of falling apart, um, and get it onto something a little bit more stable. So all we're going to do to accomplish this is very carefully get in behind here with a very thin butter knife, and use that to loosen the glue, uh, or glue or paste or whatever it was that was holding this on. And I want to err on the side of maybe leaving some of this paper on the back of the newspaper versus tearing off any of the newspaper uh, itself. Um, and just for a little background on the time capsule, uh, as far as what we know, um, it was originally buried by Mr. Wade's class uh, as part of the bicentennial uh, celebration in 1976. And uh, this article kind of tells of, of what's in it. I'll have the text of this again down in the description. Uh, let's see. All right, so all we're gonna do is brush this off. And I'm just taking a, a you know, regular paintbrush here with nylon bristles. And I'm just gonna kind of bunch them together and kind of try and get a little bit of a, a stiff bristle area going with it. I still want it to be relatively soft because I don't want to damage the paper, but I, I want it to be more than just that. So we're going to kind of get in here and brush off what we can brush off of the loose dirt. And we do want to get the back as well. And I was hoping that maybe on the back we would see something that would uh, help uh, indicate the specific date, but uh, no such luck. Uh, so now you can see that the, the paste and the glue is left behind. It looks like a dab of white glue, probably. Uh, but the stuff that's dissolving off as I brush it is what's left of the paper that this was attached to. So um, the newsprint is pretty... Uh, pretty lousy stuff for archival purposes to begin with. Uh, but then, you know, whatever it was attached to doesn't seem to have been all that good either. So I think we've got that pretty clean. And we can go over this a little more lightly. So next, all we've done is cut a piece of acid-free uh, backer paper. Uh, it's kind of cardstock, so it's got a good uh, uh, thickness to it to help protect the, the thin newspaper. And we're just going to dry mount it onto this card, no adhesive, nothing, and vacuum seal it in this bag to preserve it. I will be right back. And that is all there is to that. And of course, you saw us catalog it as we went along. So the second item I want to take a look at today is the tape. I don't know what kind of tape. I just know that it's a tape. Uh, this is also the first of the items wrapped in foil. Um, about the foil wrapping, 
Um, not sure why they decided to wrap everything in foil. I'm still, uh, I think the jury's out on whether it was a good idea or a bad idea or a mix, uh, in some cases good and in some cases bad. Uh, it seems to have protected a few things. It seems to have completely disintegrated on a few others. Um, I suppose it all uh, comes down to reactivity and, and what was inside. Um, I was a little bit worried that the steel um, ammo box that was the outside canister and the aluminum foil would have kind of a galvanic reaction there and cause corrosion, uh, which may have happened a little bit. I mean, that may be what caused uh, some of, of what's happened, but um, it doesn't seem to have terribly damaged the items inside. Um, well, let's take a look here. One other thing that I find interesting is that uh, you know how s clear uh, scotch tape um, just disintegrates over time, it gets yellow and the, and the, the, the adhesive dries out and it gets brittle? Um, in this case, it's still sticky and it's still flexible and it's still clear. If you can see this in the video. But after all this time, 43 years buried in the ground in this little box, and the glue is still sticky. I don't know, I think that's pretty neat. Let's see what the tape is. Okay. Further protected in another layer of foil. Now, if this is, uh, well, regardless of what it is, um, it's definitely a format that I do not have uh, the means to uh, copy myself or uh, digitize. So I will have to have this professionally handled. Oh, and it's labeled. Very well packaged, and it looks very clean. Um, it, it's it's um, it didn't it didn't spool uh, on the it looks like on the player or the winder wherever uh, it didn't uh, really spool all that neatly. There's there's lots of uh, kind of movement back and forth of the tape as it as it came out. You can see the ridges here, sort of. Uh, sticking out and may have twisted a little bit over here too. Uh, I definitely wouldn't try to play this myself. Um, but let's see what we've got here. Uh, the Cabinet Makers by Tim Othelet and John uh, Carlesis. The Candle Maker by Jay Robinson. The Glass Makers by S. Engel, I think that's gonna be. Um, Silversmith by, uh, I think that's Randy Jorgensen. Uh, if I'm getting my names uh, correct here. Uh, the Printers by Fred Leach. The Doctors by Mike Shea. The Potters by uh, Kevin Lacht and James Longley. And the Papermakers by Tom Stapleton. Interesting. So I am I am going to work on getting the audio off of this. Unfortunately, that's not something that we're going to be able to do today. Um, but definitely kind of a neat find, don't you think? Uh, remember, all of this stuff is as new to me as it is to you. Uh, I, we're unwrapping these things uh, as you know, as as we pull them out, and um, I have not seen them, um, and uh, neither of you. So this is kind of new to all of us. Okay, the last item that I wanted to look at today, and um, this is definitely going to be one of the more cool things, I think, is what I suspect to be a class photograph. Um, you can see here that, uh, I'll hold it up, uh, you might be able to see better in the, in the angles, the aluminum foil has completely deteriorated, uh, and a lot of it against the surface of the photograph, or, or photographs that are in here. Um, I mean, this is, is almost like a like lace, uh, it's just falling apart. So we're gonna first get the foil off. We're gonna use the brushes to you know, dry uh, brush whatever we can off of the surface of the photos. Uh, if we can get the photos out of the, uh, the cardboard um, 
uh, backer that they're in, uh, that's better. Um, it may be necessary or it may be worthwhile to actually wash the photos. Um, it's, it's something you wouldn't normally think you're supposed to do, um, but uh, sometimes that does help uh, release things that are stuck together, whether it's photos stuck to each other, sometimes the glossy surfaces when they get wet and then they dry, they're stuck together and you'll never get them apart again. Well, if you wet them again, you can get them apart. Um, you know, of course, you know, that comes with its own risks. So, you know, we, we try to avoid doing that at all, you know, at all costs if we can. But in some cases, you just can't avoid it. It's the only way to, uh, to get the material separated. So let's, um, let's see what we can do here. We'll at least get the, uh, the loose foil off the outside. some corrosion and mold. I'm intentionally leaving this for last. It's T.D. Brown photographing Warwick students for at least 43 years. Um, Apparently there was a special edition of this in 1976 for the Bicentennial. With the, that really militia and there's a flag there. 76. It doesn't, it doesn't look as though any of this has ever been wet. Um, maybe some humidity, really, but I don't think water ever leaked into the, uh, into the castle. See anywhere that there was this brown corrosion or rust or mold, it, uh, it definitely ate away at the paper a little bit more. left with this aluminum foil just scrapes off like graphite.
it's almost like what's left of the foil has become fused into the surface of the cardboard, which isn't good. There's some spots where it is really well stuck down, and I don't want to damage the design. as concerned about the back. Printed in USA. Well, that's good. It's been a bicentennial edition. Cause there, there comes a point where if you try too hard to get the last of the foil off the stuff that's really fused in and then you run the risk of just tearing up the surface of the printed material. Which is why we're not going to overdo it. And as I said, most of this is just scraping away fairly easily. to at least try to get the photograph out of this cardboard mat. Like I said, sometimes water is uh, actually beneficial and it's, it's what will help clean a photograph. Um, again, I'm going to avoid doing that and in, in some cases uh, it's the only thing that'll work, and in some cases, it's the only thing you can't do. Because if a photo is so badly water damaged that the colors, and, and you kind of saw it here, where the colors kind of swirl together, uh, where the color, if the colors look, um, I'd say almost like they've been melted into each other, that's a bad sign. That, that usually means uh, it's probably not a good idea to wash the photograph. But even that isn't always on you know, 100%. Okay, you can see at the bottom here the paper of the mat is just degraded to the point where it's, it's kind of falling apart with the foil. So again, now that I can, I want to take this photograph out of the frame. One of the reasons you see this happen with paper, again, I've talked about this in some of my previous videos, is that uh, it's, it's acid in the paper. So 
Paper is made from wood, and wood has lignin in it, which is a, a protein that holds the the fibers of the paper of the wood together into the tree. And a lot of that is dissolved and washed out in the paper making process. But the cheaper the paper, the more lignin is left behind, and the lignin is acidic, and it it slowly eats away at the fibers. You know, the once once it's once it's dead and turned into uh, paper like this. So. And I think this is about as good as we're going to get on the frame, but I'm not, like I said, I'm not too worried about the back. So this will get, um, this will get vacuum sealed against a sheet of buffered paper, similar to the newspaper article. Uh, it's acid-free paper, it's buffered, uh, so that it helps uh, with residual acids that may be in whatever you're, you're mounting it to, which is certainly the case here. I think there's going to be some residual left uh, for quite some time. I get this as, as clean as possible. I got away as much of the dust. And now we can turn our attention to the photograph itself. And again, as I said, when when you see this sort of uh, swirly effect where the colors are kind of uh, melted together, that's a bad sign, and um, it usually means that the, 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 the picture is not going to tolerate being washed underwater. Um, and in trying to scrape off what's left of the foil here. Because it's a photograph, it's much more susceptible to damage than the, the printed photo frame was. going to happen. OK. 
pen and similar to the other. Um, this will uh, just be vacuum sealed against a piece of buffered paper. And um, I think that's about as good as we're going to do. Uh, photographs are really tough, you know, like I said, there's only so much you can do. The, the chemicals that are used to develop them are half the problem, honestly. Uh, there's really no such thing as an archival photograph. Even, even the best modern photographs are still produced with chemistry when it's film photography like this. That just about wraps it up for episode one, guys. I hope you thought this was interesting, and if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do it right now, right below the video, uh, or you can click the watermark in the lower right corner. Um, when you subscribe, make sure you click the bell icon. Uh, that way you'll get a notification anytime I have a new video coming out. And speaking of new videos coming out, um, I want to know what you guys want to see next. So tell me down in the comments. Uh, you probably noticed in the opening and you'll see in the closing that I'm going to roll the B-roll footage uh, of all of the items being unpacked from the time capsule. So a lot of uh, varied uh, sizes and shapes wrapped in foil, little mystery packs. Uh, you tell me which ones you think look most intriguing and what you want to see. Um, and again, until then, uh, remember to subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.
one too. Huh? Yeah.